Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DCS. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for a DCS video. And yes, it's been too long. It's been a long time since, since uh, I've done a proper DCS video. And we're starting off with something pretty spectacular. So this is the de Havilland Mosquito Mark VI. This is the fighter bomber version of the famous RAF, Royal Air Force uh, Mosquito. Now this thing is really, really nicely modeled. The, the cockpit and everything, all the equipment is really nicely modeled by Eagle Dynamics. And at the back there, you see that there's a whole bunch of equipment, radios and stuff uh, being tucked away right over there. Now, for those of you who didn't know, the Mosquito is actually a twin seat uh, plane. Now, I personally didn't know that for a long time. I thought it was a single seat, but in fact, it's a dual seat. <laughs> so you've got that pilot navigator combination. Now, check out this um, really, really cool thing here. And that is this side window right here. <laughs> and because I'm playing in VR, whoa, have a look. I can go ahead and stick my head out of that window. <laughs> you probably don't want to do that in real life. But I found this really, really cool. And of course, you've got a little side window for the navigator as well. So unless, unless uh, you've been living under a rock, and here's a door to access the plane from the exterior, and of course, to exit the plane. Unless you've been living under a rock, if you know anything about the Second World War, you would know about uh, the de Havilland Mosquito, of obviously sometimes referred to as the Wooden Wonder. Now, this thing came in all sorts of different variations, fighter bomber, reconnaissance, heavy fighter, uh, but the one that we have here is uh, the fighter bomber version of the Mosquito. Now, um, as I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a twin engine, it's a pretty big, big uh, aircraft and the control surfaces and everything uh, I'm checking to see if they move correctly and it's got that Russian style of a uh, of a kind of a of a um, bicycle braking lever so it's similar to the Russian aircraft to the Soviet aircraft in terms of its um, uh, brake uh, lever now the gun sight is mounted down the center so <laughs> it's it's a little bit difficult to to look through when you're lining up a shot but um yeah it's 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 mounted down the center of the uh, cockpit and of course you can set the uh the base and of course the um the range as well now um uh obviously this aircraft being a a two-seat aircraft you can uh it's probably best if you if you can play with two people now i'm not sure if this is this is something that eagle dynamics is planning to include with this module but this would be something really really nice so this is this is the uh bombing and all that kind of a panel so i'm going to go ahead and open this up since i don't have a navigator helping me do all this stuff and check out this so currently i'm flying with this um camo pattern with this skin so currently this is this is the 1944 royal air force um skin and of course you have this one as well this is this is called the l3 1945 uh skin or or camouflage or paint whatever you want to call it and it looks like it has the d-day stripes so yeah those are the two paints currently two skins i should say that that's currently available for the aircraft within dcs world now enough about chit chat and let's go ahead and take it off so let's go ahead and get ready prepare to take off now you you might think that this is this aircraft is quite easy to take off in because obviously uh it's a twin engine aircraft and it's a lot easier than a single engine warbird <laughs> no 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 this is this is def definitely not an easy aircraft to take off in. it's easier than a single engine but as you guys can see while we roll down the runway this thing yaws so if you're paying attention down to the rudder pedals and that brake lever i'm actually using differential brakes quite a lot <laughs> it's that's something that you shouldn't do but i do that to keep the nose straight down the runway and of course gradually increasing power if you increase power all the way to maximum the left engine the port engine begins to smoke now as we gain speed i'm trying to correct with the rudder pedals now but being really really gentle otherwise this thing can yaw extremely uh 
to the left or to the right in fact as well so just uh, taking off right there there we go perfect uh, almost almost perfect but then you see the aircraft for some reason yaws really badly to port side to the left so you got to correct that immediately using using the stick and of course the rudder as well just going and retracting landing gear now for this video ladies and gentlemen this is not really a a kind of a tutorial per se if you're used to my DCS videos I do a lot of tutorial videos and uh, this is not going to be it for this one for this video this is just a look-see kind of a video if I was to do a proper tutorial video for this thing I would have to study the manual and this video would be out three weeks from now a month from now until I fully learn this, the various different systems of the aircraft but Today's video is just to give you guys a general overlook of the Mosquito, give you guys my opinion on it right now, and I have to do tell you guys that there, the uh, module is still in early access, so it is not fully finished, it doesn't have all of its features and bells and whistles and stuff like that. There are going to be bugs, there are going to be some stuff that is wrong with it, but the first things first, like the first thing that I've noticed flying this thing, and I've only flown it like three times is that it's it's quite handful to, to trim like I thought as I said when we were taking off I thought because this thing is a twin engine that it would be a lot easier to handle considering the uh, the, the countering of the torque with both engines counter rotating but apparently it isn't it's it's yawing really badly towards the port side towards the left side but obviously you can correct that with trim you've got rudder trim you've got aileron trim as well as pitch trim so all three axes you can trim for in the aircraft now again if you know anything about the uh the mosquito you'd know that this thing is really really fast it was it was it was really really famous for being really really fast it was really famous for being able to outrun the early models of the uh, uh, ME109s the BF109s the Emil and uh, the Frederick versions of the uh, the BF109 so the mosquitoes would just outrun the early versions of uh, the 109s now the Mosquito came out really, really early in the war. It came out, I believe it was either 40 or 41, I'm not exactly sure. But it was an aircraft that the RAF didn't really want. Or I should say the British government. The British government wasn't really interested in this thing. They're like, what are we gonna do with this heavy two-engine fighter? And um, the De Havilland Company basically uh, funded the development of this aircraft by themselves so they pretty much it's pretty much made out of wood so th the aircraft is made out of wood hardened wood in that it gives uh, um, it, it keeps it keeps the um, the aircraft a low cost so this is really important unless of course if you create a, a, an airplane out of all metal obviously it's going to cost more uh, so it's completely made out of wood. Uh, of course, some parts are metal. Uh, it can't be completely, uh, completely wood. But this thing is. That's why it's called the wooden wonder. So a lot of wood is used in this construction, and we're flying. I should also mention here on the channel map. So this isn't, isn't the uh, Normandy map. This is the channel map, and um, this this aircraft, as I said, was famous for its speed. So let's go ahead and see how fast she can fly. <laughs> Once that we've got it uh, nice and straight and all trimmed out, let's see how fast this thing will go. And if you guys, I'm not sure if you guys can see the the, the uh, airspeed indicator, but I think there we go. I think we're hitting. There we go. I, I'm having trouble seeing it because I have to constantly bring my head. <laughs> I have to constantly bring my head down. Uh, to be able to see the instruments because obviously the gun sight is blocking a lot of those instruments so we're doing around 250 miles i believe it is it's she's fast apparently she was very very fast at high altitude like 40,000 feet uh that's where the uh the um, the mosquitoes uh, could outrun the early german uh, fighters as i said so that's the airfield that we took off from and yeah the mosquito currently in DCS as I said the, the first thing that I noticed was that it was really difficult to trim it was really difficult because it would constantly yaw and pitch and 
and roll and basically you have to trim all three axes uh, to keep this thing uh, flying nice and level but as I said the, 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 the version that we have here so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a dive <laughs> And this thing just uh, starts choking and coughing because it is uh, carbureted, I believe it is. It isn't uh, fuel injected, but in this dive, we will see how fast this thing goes. Now, this isn't, as I was saying, this, is, this isn't the, uh, the fastest version of the Mosquito. This is the fighter bomber. So this thing is armed with four British uh, 303s and four Hispano 20 millimeter cannons. So let's go ahead and get down to the deck. Now, this is what some uh, Mosquitoes would do. Um, they would fly really, really down low, down near the ground at high speed, and it'd be really difficult for enemy air defense uh, assets to target them. Now we'll come back for that convoy and that uh, pillbox later on. So this is the fighter bomber version. This is the Mark VI. As I said, it's it's, it's armed with four 7.7 millimeter uh, machine guns and four 20 millimeter uh, cannons. And this thing can also carry, at the moment, uh, four, up to four 500-pound bombs or four 250-pound bombs. Now we have a bomb bay as well, so we can either we can pretty much carry two bombs on each wing, on the outer part of the wing, and two bombs in the internal carried internally in the bomb bay which is pretty cool. <laughs> I think this is the first uh, aircraft, first flyable uh, player aircraft, full sim aircraft in DCS that has a bomb bay. <laughs> so that's an extra thing that you have to worry about um, when you're going to line up for an attack run. So, so far from my initial, ex uh, my initial uh, experience with the Mosquito, as I said, I've only flown it for three times and I haven't, <laughs> I'm gonna make a confession here, I usually like reading the manuals. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually like reading the manuals and I haven't read the manual pretty much at all for this one. I've just done the tutorials and here it is. I just wanted to get a video out real quick for you guys. And of course, I'm playing in VR. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm playing in VR. If you wanna know why the screen is like this, like why is it side by side, you can watch my uh, my channel update video and you'll be uh, up to date as to why this is the case. But yeah, the Mosquito, really nice, nice module. Uh, it's still in early access, so watch out for that. If you don't like early access stuff, you want to purchase a complete module that is relatively, it will be relatively bug free then, uh, you, 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 you probably want to wait. But if you don't mind the early access stuff, this thing is pretty good. So far, flown it three times, it's actually, actually very fun. But uh, yeah, this is the fighter bomber version. We can only carry four up to four bombs, 250 pound or 500 pound. Now there's quite a different uh, selection of bombs. I believe they have differences in, in the uh, tail unit as well as the fusing up front. But obviously later on, uh, we will probably know what each, each type of bomb is used for. Whether you want to use it in a dive, whether you want to uh, do the uh, 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 straight and level bombing, or whether you want to do that um, tossing, you know, that, that bomb tossing where you'd climb and release. I believe some of those uh, ordnance would cater to that type of um, engagement. Now we're flying over Dover. These are the uh, White Cliffs of Dover, and you can see the uh, early warning radar stations down there. <laughs> so real Mosquito pilots would be flying ar uh, around the coast of Dover uh, quite regularly back in the Second World War. So quite authentic, quite an authentic experience. Now, I'm going to get into uh, what I think of the Second World War planes. now. Obviously, as most of you are interested in history, I was also interested in history. I was, I was really fascinated by the Second World War. And us types of people, like people like that, tend to, we tend to uh, kind of romanticize some of these, these machines, some of these World War II machines. And to be honest, they're quite relevant even today because it has, it's not a long time ago since the end of the Second World War. I mean, the Second World War was, was our grandparents' war, right? So not our parents, but our grandparents were military-aged uh, people back then, even if they weren't 
participating in a war or if they didn't live in Europe or whatever but it is our grandparents war and these machines although they're old right they're, they're 70 80 years old but they're not really that old considering uh, human history really so yeah um, we tend to over romanticize these these aircraft and and um, I, what I'm doing here what I'm doing right here is I'm arming the bombs so I'm, I'm prepping the bombs to uh, I'm arming the nose fuse and I'm but I'm leaving the bomb bay bombs not armed uh, basically I'm also arming the gun here so we turned on the gun sight I'm arming the guns I'm prepping the two wing bombs first to drop and then we will release the um, the bombs in the bomb bay of course you have to open the bomb bay uh, door as well now as I was saying we tend to over romanticize these these planes uh, I used to be a really really a big fan of the p47 the p47 uh, Thunderbolt now I'm really grateful <laughs> to, to be able to live in an era where we can you know have really really talented people at companies as software companies like Eagle Dynamics to be able to have really talented people to recreate a plane like this now 99.9% .9 of us will never have the ability to fly a mosquito and then I'm gonna go ahead and open the, the bomb bay door here now our only indication is a light so our only indication is a light up there an amber light that tells us that the bomb bay door is in fact open and there is the amber right light right there so that tells us the bomb bay door is open now as I was saying we tend to over romanticize these aircraft and they're they're old they're an old machine even though as I just said they're not they're still relevant but here's my point like once you actually do fly in these aircraft like this in a simulator with, with a VR headset you kind of <laughs> say to yourself eh, I'm not sure if I want to go to war in this thing I'm not sure if I want to go to war in this thing now for me as I said I really like the p47 but after I flew the p47 in DCS I was like eh, <laughs> I think I'll go to war in an f-16 if, if push cuffs to shove but obviously that's a silly thing to say but I'm what I'm just saying is that I'm really grateful for Eagle Dynamics and for the company that makes VR headsets you know oculus uh, really really talented people that give us this opportunity to be able to fly these historical machines but there is a there's a tendency to really then be kind of disappointed as well because you see that's a really really old aircraft now here we're diving on this pillbox we're gonna release the two 500 pound bombs and there we go pickle and really gently pulling up making sure we don't snap our wings and yes there we go a direct hit a direct hit on the pillbox and as I said I've flown this thing out before it's great it's absolutely great in dive bombing this thing is for some reason guys I don't know why but this thing is really really good in dive bombing it's so easy and it's very very accurate uh, now I'm not the greatest at air to ground uh, at ground pounding in, in World War II aircraft but um, this thing is really really easy to do so I'm gonna go ahead and now arm up the uh, bomb bay uh, 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 release mechanisms so we can release the bomb bay ones if you enable all four basically with the first push of the button the pickle button you will release all four stations now if you want to do that that's fine but in this case I want to go ahead and perform a re-attack a second attack this time we're going to drop the bombs on uh, the APC column now as I said there's a there's a there's a bit <laughs> there's a bit of me uh, where it's kind of disappointed when I fly these old warbirds I'm like nah. <laughs> it's it's it, they were dangerous they were dangerous although having said that you probably in the early year in the early years of World War two you probably want to be in a mosquito squadron rather than a hurricane squadron or a Spitfire squadron because these guys actually had the lowest casualties in the first parts of the war obviously then later on the Germans got the the fucker wolves and of course the later model uh, 109s that were really really fast and they could catch up to a mosquito and shoot it down seems like our pillbox is burning down there there we go cutting the engine now i hate that buzzer <laughs> that that buzzer is basically telling you you've you've retarded the uh, throttles but your landing gear isn't down so watch out 
basically a, a stall prevention kind of a warning system. Now getting lining up on that convoy and pickle. Gently pulling up. Looking back. Oh, what happened there? What happened there? <laughs> uh Okay. So I heard I heard the bombs fall. I heard the clunk. I'm not sure if it came through the video, but I don't know what happened there. I am pretty sure I activated the uh, the release mechanism f for the bomb bay, and the bomb bay doors are open. And I th I think so. Let's go ahead and close the bomb bay doors. I think the two bombs <laughs> may have collided midair. Now I'll have to look at the replay, but I'm pretty sure the two bombs that was the smoke that we just saw in midair. I think the two bombs might have collided. Now obviously this is really difficult to get to. So let's close that. Let's close that gun camera slash bombing panel. Now obviously your navigator would do this. Now as I said at the beginning, I'm not sure if this thing is multiplayer. I'm not sure if uh, you could play with your buddy where your buddy could be a navigator for you and help you out basically do all this stuff for you. Um, now we're gonna go back around and do a guns pass. We're gonna do a guns pass on uh, that convoy that we just uh, we weren't able to bomb with the two bombs. Um, let's, I'm gonna try and open this panel up again and and uh, clean up that that fusing. <laughs> basically, you've got the option to, to to fuse the bombs either for nose or tail. So yeah. Uh, this thing is amazing, it's great, and I'm really, really grateful to be living in, a, in an era where I could just use a VR headset and, uh, you know, really talented people like the, the people at Eagle Dynamics to recreate such an experience for us. As I said, 99.9% .9 of us will never have the experience to fly a mosquito. It, it just won't happen. It's, there's There's none, really. There's no... Uh, you know surviving mosquitoes out there that you could just you know own or fly really no matter how rich you are no matter how famous or talented you are it's very difficult to fly one let alone take one into combat be able to drop bombs in no no that's just not gonna happen and it's only happening because of how technology has advanced and because of passionate people that recreate these sims for us and I'm very very grateful but be prepared to be kind of disappointed um, it's because you know obviously we're we're people of today we we we've seen f-18s we've seen f-22s we've seen f-16s <laughs> and i know it's a really silly thing to try and compare this to modern aircraft but it's going to happen it's going to happen subconsciously whether you like it or not so right here we're lining up on this convoy we're going to open up with all eight guns there we go oh that was nice lots of ricochets lots and lots of ricochets you need to be careful not to fly into those ricochets so just keeping low flying low really really fast this is what the mosquito is really good at keeping really low and then obviously starting to pull up again pulling up again slowly obviously these targets that we've we've placed there are inert they're not shooting back so here i want to go ahead and do a complete uh loop and of course, because this thing is carbureted, as soon as you put some negative G's on the carburetor, the, the, the engine begins to cough and begins to sputter. Now coming back around, there's a Panzer IV right there. Just there we go, right there, opening up with the 20s and the uh, 303s. Obviously not expecting a lot against the Panzer IV. <laughs> But we did manage to burn something. There was something burning down there. Now you guys might might be able to see though that ricochet on the on the surface of the water. You need to be careful of ricochets. Those ricochets can can and will damage your aircraft if you fly through your own ricochet. So we I think we set uh, one APC on fire, and the other ones might have taken some damage. But yeah, if those. Two 500 pound bombs had impacted uh, that would have been a different story that would have been a completely different story but yeah this thing is the fighter bomber version it's it's for some reason great in, in dive bombing as you guys can see the impact on that pillbox on that German pillbox it's pretty much very very accurate very accurate and I, keep in mind I've only flown this thing out three times 
Although given that I'm flying in VR, it's probably a lot easier to line up shots in, uh, or drop bombs in, uh, in VR. But yeah, this thing is great for, for a fighter bomber now. As I said, this thing is in earlier access, so expect more stuff to come for the Mosquito. More weapons, like what I mean by stuff is like uh, maybe rockets. We might get rockets. Uh, we might get uh, more bombs. We might get uh, more fixes for the plane. Now, as to the flight model of the aircraft, I I generally try and test out. Like as soon as I get a new module in DCS, I try and immediately test the flight model. Now with this one, I haven't had much of a time to try and see if I, if if it if how the flight model performs. Uh, now and to be honest I haven't I don't I don't have a lot of experience in a twin engine World War II aircraft like I know what to expect for in something like the P-51 or like a Corsair but something like this with twin engine it's very difficult for me to judge where the flight model is obviously if the if the if the plane doesn't stall I'm not saying this thing this one doesn't but if the if a plane doesn't stall then yeah you know you got something wrong with the flight model but I haven't been able to test this one. There we go. Opening up again. Whoa! <laughs> that was a that was a long strafing run. And you guys can see those ricochets impacting the ground right next to us, right there. So yeah, I haven't been able to test the flight model, but from what I've initially, from the three times that I've flown it, it looks like it has an advanced flight model at the moment. Obviously, it's early access. Flight models stuff could could be a problem, but this thing. Um, seems okay seems okay except for the trimming part as I said at the beginning it's really difficult to, to get a handle to really get a grasp on the trimming of the aircraft to get it trimmed nice and uh, well now I haven't flown it at high altitude I've only flown it down here in the deck probably the, the highest I've flown this thing was like 9,000 feet to do a dive <laughs> and yeah it, it's fast but again as I said it's fast for 1940s, early 1940s, 1940, 41, 42. By 40, 44, 45, you had piston uh, 109s that could do up to 900 kilometers an hour, 800 kilometers an hour in a dive, and this thing just could not, could not survive. So a little bit of a battle damage assessment. So we can see the pillbox is out. It got struck by the uh, two 500-pound bombs. Uh, two. APCs burning the front two APCs uh, or half tracks survived. Obviously, the tank would survive uh, a 20 millimeter barrage. Um, yeah. Now, now comes the um, the part where we land. This is this is this is where <laughs> this is this is uh, the hairy part of any new module in DCS when I when I um, first fly it. Now, as I said, I like reading the manuals, so it's a good thing to read the manual because you would get a good understanding of what you need to do to uh, land. Basically, it gives you approach speeds, it gives you speeds where it's safe to drop the landing gear and all that flaps and all that good stuff. But here, I haven't even practiced the the training missions for the landing so I have zero information on, on how to land this thing what are the parameters and all that I'm just gonna pretend I'm a test pilot <laughs> this is this is what I like to do so I'm prepping the uh, the flap handle here basically it's got a, a, a stop lever that prevents you from dropping the, the flaps accidentally but you can still retract the flaps but here we, we're getting ready to go ahead and land now, as I said, I'm pretending to be a test pilot. So, test pilots, obviously, when you take when you take off in a plane, uh, the scientists and the engineers are like, "Here, here's a here's a plane. Uh, go fly it and tell us what's wrong with it." <laughs> uh, you kind of have to, you know, using common sense, figure out. At least it was back then, not now. Now, now test piloting is a whole different game. Uh, but back then you had to use common sense you know like some of the, the common sense that I'm using is pretty much all right let's get down to a, a, a safe altitude first let's be in a, on a, in a safe altitude where what I mean by safe altitude is where it, you're not very low and you're not very high so you're you're at that 2,000 foot um, elevation of altitude above ground 2,000 foot 2,500 foot 1,500 foot so let's go ahead 
and drop the landing gear gear here now we're less we're slower we're slowing down to 150 miles so given that this thing is a twin engine i'm expecting the landing gear to be pretty beefy so i'm guessing it's safe to drop the landing gear at 150 miles now you shouldn't do this really the, this is the wrong way this is doing the right thing the wrong way <laughs> um so we can begin uh after we slow down to around 120 to 130 miles an hour to begin to drop flaps and that's what i'm going to do right here so let the flaps drop all the way to 50 degrees i believe it is and there we go so full flaps down full gear down we got the two green lights and we're approaching the airfield obviously as i said you want a bit of altitude here in, in a situation like this where you're not sure what your approach speed is i'm not even sure what the uh, stall speed is for this one so i'm just going to keep it at 120 100 miles an hour and i'm just i'm just going to work with the aircraft i'm going to i'm going to feel for vibrations i'm going to obviously look for the plane starting to stall if if i see the plane is starting to stall i'm just going to uh, increase throttle lift up the undercarriage and then flaps finally but here it's it's coming along really really nicely just keep an eye on on that airspeed indicator just look look at the airspeed indicator and that kind of gives you an indication so gently coming down on a nice glide of course this is a really nice airfield <laughs> for world war ii it's it's fully paved i believe it's concrete runway 29 there we go this is actually very nice this is beautiful there we go obviously we didn't land on the first third bit of the runway but that's all right that's a huge runway and there we go touchdown beautiful now you want to be really gentle with the rudder here and you don't want to touch the differential brakes just yet you want to pull back on the stick cut power pull back on the stick make sure you've got control of the aircraft and now slowly tapping the brakes slowly tapping the brakes and of course tapping the uh the rudder rudder pedals now to try and get us to the side of the runway and we're just going to go ahead <laughs> and park up on the side of the runway now with any world war ii warbird you never want to slam on the brakes ever this is not an f-16 guys if you slam on the brake you know what's going to happen you're going to nose dive into the uh the runway <laughs> doesn't matter what you're flying if it's a world war ii plane you don't want to slam on the brakes and there we go we pretty much have the aircraft in control we're just going to stop right here come to a complete stop engage the uh, parking brake and let's go ahead and get some fresh air into the cockpit yes that was a successful flight we managed to drop some bombs demonstrate for you guys some strafing runs and that's about it we can open the, <laughs> open up the door now i i what i forgot to do was the uh the flight testing the flight model testing but we'll leave that for later on so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this video and i apologize for not doing uh, much dcs videos for the past year but here is a first look a first impressions of the dcs uh the havilland mosquito mark six the fighter bomber version now as i said my first impressions of this thing it's great it's really really good at at ground attack it's had it looks it looks to have a solid flight model and it looks great on the inside all the textures and everything look great but of course it's early access it's bound to have some bugs it's also missing missing some features but yeah ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you guys next time until then please take care and bye bye